Lord can't stay with me. You know, her name is Ethel Livingston, but if I say that name, most folks people in Terra will say, who's that again? If I say Cupcake, so Cupcake, before we get started, tell us how you got the name. Um, I got the name because I have my mother's sister and her husband. My mother's sister and her husband, who didn't have children until after me, she had had two miscarriages, and they kind of took me as theirs. And because I was the blackest, cutest thing they'd ever seen, and he always brought me cupcakes from his work in the afternoon, that became my nickname. All right. I was the blackest, sweetest thing, their cupcake. All right. Well, and I was 70 you. years old. I hate nicknames. I don't like them. My children are called by their name. Okay. <laughs> but you've got the name, Cupcake. I you have know you have the name. But yes. We thank you, Cupcake, for your love thank for this you community. For having me. You're, you're welcome. I was going to say, uh, we've been studying for the last five weeks or so the 23rd Psalm. That's been our emphasis, is to study the 23rd Psalm. Very familiar passage. And we broke it down with one scripture at a time. It just so happens that today falls on verse 5, mm -hmm. which is one of the tougher verses in the 23rd Psalm. And it says, He, God, prepares a table. For me in the presence of my enemy. Come on now. Well now, Cupcake, I do not consider you my enemy. I understand. I consider you my friend. I but there is some hardship yes. going on in our yes. country. Yes. And, and people are seeing each other as enemies. And I, I had my, my business superintendent this week explain that. I told him we were going to talk. And he was so glad to hear that. Dick was sad. And I said, we're going to meet at this table. Yes. Because Thank it you says, the table. Oh, it says in verse 5, it says, he prepares the table. So God prepares the table yes, in the presence. Yes. And John Rudder is one who uh, is a composer. And he's, he, he developed a song called The Lord is My Shepherd. Yes. And Taylor and Aaron sang it about three weeks ago. I love one of the verses there. Instead of saying enemies, mm -hmm. on that verse they said, Thou shalt prepare a table for me against them that trouble me. Oh, no. And that, that, that verse from that song by John Rutter inspired the title of today's sermon. It's not a sermon, it's a dialogue. Not a sermon, but a dialogue, which is, What Troubles You? Amen. So I'm going to turn it over, Cupcake, because I want you to tell us what troubles you. And I want to hear, starting with, tell us, you've been here literally all your life. You, you, even when you were in college, you commuted to commerce. So Terrell has been your home. I've only been there three years. But I mean, it's a joy to be part of your life. You've been here 70 years yes. and seeing things and some horrible things, seeing some segregation, desegregation, and seeing ongoing battles and strife and difficulties and challenges. I just want to hear from your perspective because I believe more than anything, we need to listen and learn. And uh, let's just let you talk. Go ahead and tell us. First of all, to God, Amen. be unto the King eternal. Immortal, the invisible, the only and wise God, to Him be glory, honor, and praise. Good morning, my good morning, man, good morning. Reverend Pastor Pete. What an honor to be in the house of the Lord, and what an honor to be asked to share the things that trouble me. Do I have troubles? Yes. The troubles that I have, I learn how to mask over 70 years because we have been, I have been, in most cases, that caused me pain to be invisible. I always told my kids now, and like your aunt kids, and young nieces, nephews that are growing up, you shouldn't have to go through what I've gone through. Discrimination, racism looks the same every generation just in different faces, different places. And as a person that has lived a lifelong in Terrell, on the south side of Terrell, which I now live in North Terrell, but all my life in South Terrell, raised on Brazil, I've seen things and i felt things. I've seen our community be neglected of the things that we needed to have a healthy environment for our children growing up. And that means the Brazilia Park, for example, that we have right now. I remember when it had a really nice brick building and it caught on fire, and they replaced it with that really nice little tin building that doesn't have a restroom in it. 
but by the same token, our children still have not gotten over and there are still people in the South community that says the white part. We're going to the white part. You know, that troubles me. As a community that's supposed to be united, it shouldn't be a white part, it shouldn't be a black part, it should be the parts. Yes. That troubles me. And how do we get it to be the parts? And just, just for those that are outside of here that I know, we have a, a railroad track. That, that's how our, our community was founded with uh, Robert Terrell was the one who helped us. Exactly. The, the, railroad, the railroad track really right. divides the town. It goes east and west and physically. And there is a sense of the south side and the north side. So yeah, please keep going. And, and even though that railroad track physically divides us, mm -hmm. mentally it still divides us. Mm -hmm. Because right. even though we are now integrated, and I went through that, Yes, you did. I, uh, you graduated in 1968? I graduated to junior, senior high at the time because it was a combination of both yes. in 1968. I chose not to integrate when Mr. Hester would come and make a plea for us to come when the federal government stated that you, know, you have to have X number of black folk in your mm -hmm. schools. And we kind of ignored him, but every year he would come and plea. And I got angry one year because I had heard a story, well, it wasn't a story, I had heard a statement from several teachers that if we got the hand-me-down books from the white school, that if we damaged the book, we would have to pay full price for it. The book is already damaged. You know, it's torn, it's been taped, they put a piece of paper in the front so you could continue writing names in there. And that bothered me. That bothered me because I felt like I was entitled to a book that was not used. Mm. Smell fresh and new. Mm. Mm. People, that's the reason why I integrated. I transferred and would possibly have been the salutatorian of my class of 68 to go to Terrell High and graduate in a class of 112 as number 12. Okay. I should have rated in the top 10, but I knew I had a struggle. And the struggle was with my American, American history teacher. That same teacher would give us assignments, walk down aisles, and use the N word. Mm. That's painful. Wow. But she said it just like it was having regular conversation. But of course, she wasn't there the next year, thank God. You know, we're here, and we're not going anywhere, <laughs> you know? We're not going anywhere. And that's why I tell my children all the time, you know, be the best you can be, because you're good and you'll never be good enough. Yes. It's never going to be good enough, not in this society that we live in. So I always say, you got to go pack it. This is, yeah, this is so, and, and, and you, you know, I was going to share a, an editorial that I saw on the Dallas Morning News this week, and he gave me permission to share just the first paragraph of this or two. That's by Rudy, Rudy Bush. Mm -hmm. It says, trying to understand the protests that are gripping our country right now by flipping through your phone is like trying to see the world through someone else's glasses. Uh, so I'm going to ask you, you to go ahead and give me yours, and you take mine, uh, and let's just see how it works, okay? Okay, it's, it's, it's not easy. It's not okay, easy. Okay, all right. So let's see how we do. But it's a lot easier. Oh my goodness. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Can you see it all through mine? I, I can see it, but, but it's not in it, it's, it's very difficult. But I can so, see. I so what, what, what this is telling me is, is, is me trying to see through Ethel's glasses takes work. Yes. It takes listening. It's, it's empowering, but to, wow, that is so And looking different. through my, my glasses. My glasses are very different. You're not going to feel the pain that no. you feel. No. no. You're not going to feel the hurt that our children go through. Yes. And when I say my children shouldn't have to go through what I'm going through, just recently my great nephew, right here in this wonderful city of terror, was called all kinds of N words. And I know him. He's yes, a great everybody nephew. knows him. He's a great well, 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 well thank you. Know, it was my great nephew, yeah. Khalid yeah. Uh, Johnson, and his parents and his grandparents know I was going to call him out because it hurt yes. for him to have to go to a Whataburger here in our town yeah. and be yelled at oh, from a 
truck by a Caucasian man, mm-hmm. and he was a thug, and he was the N word. And he, this is the year 2020. This is not 1968. This, this, this is, is not 1968, and that's why I tell you all the time. I said, my children shouldn't have to go through what I went right. through. And we need to we need to hear that story. My children should have to go through what I went through. All we see is things on television. And television teaches you wrong about who we are as a race. The only way you can get to know us to talk to us and we can educate you as we go because television is not real. Most people get paid mm-hmm. to do what they're doing. We are real and we all have a story. Yes. It bothers me when a young woman has college degree from the University of Texas. One of my son Mary's friends, she's her hometown is Arkansas. She went through a bout of depression and she found through her depression that she could paint. Wonderful mm-hmm. artist. And I'm sorry I didn't bring her art piece that she sent me for my birthday. But she paints to deal with her depression and her anxiety. She goes to various you know, shows and set up tables and have her paintings displayed. And she just recently added this you know, a workshop or whatever, a job fair, whatever she was doing. But this woman that looked like you came to her and said, hmm, that's pretty good painting for a colored girl. Wow. And as she visited with her, they had dialogue. And she said, you know, you are real good to be a colored girl. Mm -hmm. You know, speaking of color, I remember back in the day when we were Negroes on whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Uh, Negroes. Well, I think somewhere along the line they decided they wanted to change us and put black. And then we went from black to African American. Who, who is the they? And I mean, see, 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 you see, you see, see, you see, call, see and, and that's, you know, yeah. they didn't ask me, you know, if I had a choice of choosing my ethnic group. But again, those are the situations that people make decisions for us or me, and I don't know about. Yeah. Yeah. That's just like uh, my son Laren, and most of them know him. Until recently, I knew he's had hardship, and I've always told Laren, Lisa, Lisa, and Eric, if you can master Terrell High School, which is a struggle, has lots of troubles for black children. Yeah. yeah. And and I say that with all honesty. You can master Terrell High School, you can master anything. And they mastered it. Mm-hmm. They mastered it. And not only them, but my brothers and sisters that attended, I attended it. We mastered it, but we mastered it going through pain. Mm-hmm. Pain that was never, ever obvious to anybody but us. Mm-hmm. Why? Because most of the time we're invisible. Mm-hmm. You know, you see us, you need us to do something, we do it. But then after that, it's all over. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why I tell them, you have to be strong. Yeah. Don't ever allow your enemy, the troubles that you're going through, to see your hurt and change. So bring this to Psalm 23, the 23rd Psalm. So and this, 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 this scripture, to that's this, how, how do you see Christ in this? And I see this? Christ in this, and I thank God that I'm saved and sanctified and filled with the Spirit. Amen. Because in the olden days, <laughs> As my brother just said, before she had the word in her, it would have been a different story. Okay. Because I wasn't an angry black woman, but I was angry. Mm-hmm. Most people didn't know it because I had a great ear and some friends I made before I went to school the junior year because I went to work at a dairy mart and learned how to be a fried cook. Mm-hmm. And that was the place where all the young people hung. Made some friends. And some never ever could accept who I was, but I cooked for them. Mm-hmm. And as far as this scripture, preparing a table before mm-hmm. us, this table is one that God has anointed. Yes. He has anointed for his people. Yes. Mm-hmm. And if his people can't sit at the welcome table that he's prepared before us, and break bread together. Mm-hmm. There is something wrong with that picture. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. something. It's something wrong with that picture. But we do have people come week in or month in, and they do sit at God's table. Mm-hmm. And they take the Holy Communion. Mm-hmm. 
But somewhere in there, it tells you to examine yourself. Yes, the before you take that holy communion, yes, sure. and make sure that you are not taking it unworthy. Amen. And unworthily by not. Yeah. There you go. And and we, confessing our sins. And that's the thing. As a when, as individual and a society. And a society, and we as a society, before we can even begin to understand or see through the eyes of cupcake and others that yes. feel the way cupcake feels. You're going to have to examine yourself. Yes, yes. You're going to have to examine yourself. You're going to have to look deep within and make sure, especially yes. if you're saying you're a child of God. Right. Because everybody that's saying I'm God's child ain't God's child. Exactly. And we have to be careful. I, I want to say, I want to share with you, a, a pastor, a friend of mine, Wrote, spoke this to me in Zoom. This, she says that good people, good people are going to have to stand up and speak the gospel of Jesus Christ. Where are the good people? And because quite often we think we're good people. And, and the thing is, if, if you start your sentence with, I'm not racist, then but, you got a problem. <laughs> so I would, I would recommend two books for you. And the first of them is a really good book that I've enjoyed called White Fragility. I would say I, I wouldn't say I enjoyed it. I say this stirred me. It's written by a white lady named Robin DeAngelo. And I would recommend this book, White Fragility. The subtitle is why it's so hard for white people to talk about racism. Well, it is because we don't want to talk about it. We want to talk about something else, the economy, the rangers, the coronavirus, anything. But we don't really want to talk about and it. And that's because it hurts. Yes, because we're it's painful. It. So that's and one the book. thing is, so many of us that, so many whites that have a conscience, when we get to the word racism and discrimination, we don't want they to know by nature and by constitution that the, the black race has been mistreated. Sure. Yeah. But we don't want to take personal but, ownership. But we don't take ownership. And we have a disease in the United States yes, of America. We, we and the disease, number one, is racism mm -hmm. coupled with sexism. Now, yes. think about that. Yeah, exactly. That's a disease, or those are the two things that our country has really ignored. If it don't come to my front door and knock it, and nobody looks like they're having a problem, we're good. And what you said also that now, <laughs> what we're seeing in the last 30 years is more, more on, on a, I guess one, one relationship is more biracial children. And how do you have those conversations? What well, you have when you say, wait a second. And so I think quite often we'll find a white spouse, they'll say, wait a second, this is my child. Uh -huh. and, and so really quite often it's when the white people with the power, with the marbles, you might yes. say, are the ones that can initiate it. And so really it's not a burden on the black people to do it. It's a burden on the white people. But this burden has been carried by yeah. our people yes. for so long. You know, mm -hmm. the Constitution, and we often run back to that, you know. Guys that are like you, Pastor P, blood out, blood out, blood out. <laughs> guys that look like you wrote that Constitution. Why you, those guys are writing the Constitution. People that look like me, brown eyes and nappy hair, they were out being whipped, hung, kicked around, mistreated after they worked themselves to death in building a country. So, when the Constitution was written, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men, don't miss it, mm -hmm. <laughs> all men are created equal. Well, we as a black race, we didn't fit into that. We were not considered humans, but animals that worked and took care of our country. We've been in pain, like you said, for over 400 years, and we heard, but we've had enough. And more and more, you see people coming together, acknowledging that they sinned and come short of God's yes. glory. That's what we're gonna do. Today. And they ask for forgiveness. Yes. And they ask that their hearts be clean. Yes. And create in them clean hearts and renew their yes. spirits. Yes. And, yes. and that's the thing. You know, I got through. And most of my friends and my family never ever knew that I was hurting during the time of integration and going through high school and working and you know all of those things because I never ever showed the pain. Mm -hmm. I was in pain, 
but I dealt with it. I'm yeah. to share with us today. The end pain. And today, at 17 years old, I am still hurting. Because now we're seeing, because you don't I'm want to say hurting. hurting your sons and your grandsons. <laughs> my you prayer, prayer, my prayer, after the George Floyd incident, but prior to that, mm -hmm. you know, all mm -hmm. the way back, all but all the years. ones that just came up, sure. well, we can go back to the trade on market. Yes. And, and, you know, it's, it's kind of sad. Even though the Bible says that we we're always supposed to pray and not think. Well, I have sons, mm -hmm. grandsons, nephews, you know, and males in my family that I truly love. But it's hard. You pray for them to come home. Every night. Lord home. Jesus, get my sons home, home yes. safely. Yes. And if I don't get a call in the night, I wake up thanking Lord, the Lord for getting my sons and my yeah, grandsons home safe. Even if they, you know, have done something wrong, I just want them to be treated yes. fair. Our yes. Christians are full of black men yes. that have served time and continue to serve time. I think the little things that somebody that looks like you can tap on the wrist and say, don't do it now, Lord. Yes. And they're serving anywhere from five, twenty life sentences. So the same thing that you got to tap on your wrist card. That's painful, and that it does. troubles me. That does. And Absolutely. just recently, uh, there was a gentleman on. I don't even want to, but for some reason, I was channel surfing. Had been in prison for thirty-two years for something he didn't do, and thank God for DNA, and they were able to mm -hmm. do that and find out that he yeah. wasn't. The person. It's a journey. It's a journey. On. It's a journey. And we can't do it yeah. by ourselves. We, we got to seek God. <laughs> and I was going to share with this. This is on Jesus' last night with his disciples. Mm -hmm. When he was there and he was, uh, he broke the bread and he gave the, the juice, the wine, and, they, and he, he, he spoke. One of the things he said in John 17, we need to read the gospel. Yeah, you got to read the word. The word, the the word. Read, read this, it's just, because I, because I have I have given them that's us the disciples God's word mm. and the world has hated them. All right. And that's what we need to realize is that when we really truly live into God's word, the world is going to hate you. Because we yeah. know who yeah. is the king and overall in this world. And of course, we that are believers, we're in the world, but not of the world. We don't have to get out of the exactly. in a rut. And that's exactly what he says right here. I've sent them into the world. All right. So we can't just leave it. All right. All right. So I, and then I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. Yes. So God is calling us on yes. to sanctification. Yes. And I think there, there's so much we could say, but this yes. is, uh, yeah. this, this, we're going to have only continue at all, but I just want to read something. That, uh, that Drew Brees wrote. Drew Brees oh, is yes. the quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. Yes, that's been and he's a, he, he's a white man. And, yes. he's, and, and I know a relative of his, and they, they say he is a solid Christian, and he's there uh, at family reunions and just as humble My as he is. you played against him. Okay, for the Saints? Yes, okay. in, yes uh, in the uh, NFL, who is a young black man that grew up right here in Terrell. Okay. And when they had an opening for a coaching position here in Terrell, now he's a Baylor graduate. He played five years in the NFL with Panthers and a year with the Dallas Cowboys. And everybody probably knows who I'm talking about. But it pains me. It troubles me that when he applies for a job and they tell him he's not qualified and the uh, interviews are closed. Something's wrong with that picture. All his heart wants to do is to touch sure. lives of children. But as the God as the Lord would have it, he is the Third head coach has ever been hired at the Great Vine Academy. Okay. And that's where he will be. And that's what I was told him. But it always cut his heart because he just wanted to be at home. Yeah. Let me just read this to Drew Brees, and then I want to go to communion. I want your help with that. But Drew Brees writes, we must stop talking about the flag and shift our attention oh, to the yeah, real right. issues of systematic racial injustice, economic oppression, Police brutality and judicial and prison reform. This is again Drew Brees, the New Orleans Saints writing this. We are at a critical juncture in our nation's history. If not now, when? And that close with the words of George Bush. Uh, he wrote on this column in the Terrell Tribune just just today and yesterday. It says the stains 
on our character Hello. are sometimes difficult for the American majority, that's me, to examine. So, Cupcake, I thank you for being here. So, again, I say, this is one good book. This is a much better book to read, too. And that if we need to read the red letters, especially, the gospel letters, and, and also we need to prepare for Holy Communion. We're going to do this. And we need to actually spend time with God. So I'm, I'm going to uh, ask us to have our worship crew and those that are part of this to stand up here behind us and bring your hymnals. We're going to turn to page 12. And uh, we're going to uh, examine our hearts. And so, yeah, if you could all could stand over here, that would be good. And, uh, and be part of this. And page 12 is it's a confession of our sins that we had. So it says, let us, if you guys want to get a position there, read. So, uh, yeah, and you guys can stand so people can see you on the camera, maybe this way a little bit more or something like that. They might get spaced out socially distanced a little bit so they can see. So, together on page 12, merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joy and full obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. So hear this good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love to us. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Thank you, Lord. you are forgiven. Thank in the name you, Lord. of Jesus Christ, Thank each you, of us is forgiven. Thank you, Lord. And you say to me, Peter, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, that's the peace. You are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. God. So as we prepare for the rest of our, our communion service, I just wanted to say that uh, on the night when you died, Jesus stood bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, so this is my body, broken for you. Take and eat. Likewise, he took the cup and says, this is my blood, poured out, the blood of the new covenant, poured out for each of us. Take and drink and remember me. And so what I would say is your pastor, and those that are online watching wherever you are, today as your servant, pour, pour out your Holy Spirit, Lord. Amen. On these gifts of bread and wine, and they, they may be for us the body and the blood of Christ. We may be for the world, the body of Christ, amen. redeemed by his blood. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I'd like to ask those that are participating here, including uh, Cupcake, to just receive. This is touch-free. We're not going to have this whole We don't have this right here. We have individual juice and wafer. So if you, you all can come through there and receive that and take that back to your seats. When we do come back, we will have this kind of Holy Communion for, for the congregation. Body of Christ. Blood of Christ. And this tastes so good when we realize what's taking place. We are being made new again in the image and likeness of God. And so thank you for joining us today. We're about to conclude with our, our, our closing, closing music. I just want to ask you to examine your heart today. Yeah. Ask you to confess your sins before God and one another. Yeah. And ask you to come into the relationship, first of all, with loving the Lord your God, yes. with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yes. And secondly, to love our neighbor Amen. God bless you, Pastor. as ourselves. Amen. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.